with a new year and a new month, we have new free for the month content on the Epic Marketplace. This month we're looking at the Did Not Hit Trace Detection plugin, a plugin to help with all of your trace detection needs, the Orca Games full animation bundle, the procedural biomes, which we'll look into the, uh, the details of that name a little bit later, the triplex house filler, and the Magic and Spell Sounds Pro. So that's what we're going to be looking at this month. I'll do a quick overview now of what these packages contain, and then, as always, jump into a little bit of the functionality and the features where that may be applicable in the different templates. First, inside of the Did It Hit Trace plugin, one of the ones I always like, with a little bit more of a code and blueprint feature here, something that people can learn from. And I think this one will be very useful for a lot of different projects and helping people with questions I see come up quite a lot in Q and A's and forums. Uh, people are always asking how to do this type of melee trace, how to detect hits. And of course, using things like this accurate trace is going to be much better than collision checking. Just a couple of recommendations. If you're going to install this, I'd recommend installing it to Unreal Engine 5 or one of the Unreal Engine 4 versions. Down below, we can see that we have links to example projects. And I have found that using the Unreal Engine 5.0 project doesn't seem to work with the Unreal Engine 5.1 plugin. You install this directly to the engine, not per project. You can, of course, just look through the documentations. But with this type of plugin, I do quite like having an example project just so I can see how they would recommend setting it up. I tend to pick things up much better that way. So I really like the fact they've provided these example projects. And if you wanted to get that working, I've just found that the Unreal Engine 5 plugin install works as you'd expect with the Unreal Engine 5 project. So I'd go with that combination for now. Next, we have the Orca Games full animation bundle. Not too sure what this one is. I don't know if they're joking on their page, but I like the fact they keep saying that uh, this will be ideal for your cardio based game. I don't know who is making cardio based games. Maybe there's going to be a new gym simulator or something. I haven't downloaded this one. I will never need this, but uh, that is there and ready for people to download and add to your account if you wish to do so. Procedural biomes then. Not too sure how this one got away with the naming convention. This is from what I can see, unless I'm missing something, and I've read through this and looked through the projects, there's no blueprint implementation. This is just a set of environmental assets. Uh, not really the type of assets that I would use. It's kind of that semi-pseudo-realistic, but not good enough to not have that uncanny valley thing going on. I've downloaded this one. I might try and make it look more stylized or something. You could probably use the assets and tweak them. Uh, it doesn't look bad, just not something that I would use. But the naming thing interests me quite a lot. I'm not sure if I've missed something here. It's called the procedural biomes plugin, which made me think it would be providing a bunch of plugins or blueprints to work with some kind of dynamic procedural generation. If we look down here, we've got some documentation, which doesn't really mention that. And then just below that, we have the steps to get this to be procedural, which is just to enable a bunch of readily available Unreal Engine features, which are still only in the experimental stage as well, using Niagara and the VFX to have this littered and kind of procedurally placed, which technically means that any environment pack on the marketplace is procedural. I'm not too sure how the naming convention worked with that here. Something like stylized environment would be fine, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Triplex house filler, again, very realistic. This one actually is really, really good. High fidelity, 4K textures, looks very, very crisp. Pretty much what you'd expect. Everything's set up with the materials and textures. I'll go into that a little bit later in the more detailed sections. But you can see just from the screenshots, this has some really good looking uh, shots and assets available inside of this pack. This one especially, with the uh, the back of the, the villa being displayed here, just something really caught my eye. Uh, and this is, again, one of those things I probably wouldn't use this super high fidelity, realistic style in any of my projects or games, but trying to do something running this through substance, maybe uh, simplifying some of the things, adding some stylized PBR effects or something on this could make it look quite interesting. So another one that I'm quite interested to have in my library and maybe play around with one day. Finally, we have the magic and spell sounds. Not a whole lot to say with this one. You may have noticed a couple of sounds already in the video that's coming from this. Just some swooshes from the different signed libraries available here. A lot of different signs here, for sure. 615 unique audio waves. They've also put these into the queues, which I think you need to do when submitting to the marketplace anyway. Just your standard kind of package of magic and spell sound effects. But they seem pretty good from what I've seen so far. Okay, so jumping into the first project, this is the Did I Hit 
This is the plugin working in the example project that I mentioned. So like I've said, really useful that they provide this. It means that you can very quickly get everything set up and working, testing what works, see the implementation inside of their blueprints. We can see here, as I run around, I can hit the things and it will feed back the name of the thing that I've hit with the sword. Simple line tracing going on. Although it's quite simple to set up, it does save a lot of time having this sort of thing available. It's the type of thing that you tend to do in a lot of different projects and you're just doing that busy work over and over again. So it's not hard, but it is time consuming. The way that they've exposed everything as well, if we jump into one of the blueprints, very, very easy to set up and modify things. So we've got the did it hit actor, uh, which you just enable the traces on, in this case during the montage. And we can see here with the actor selected, we have a ton of different options that we can change the, the size, the duration, the length. Uh, we've got things like the colors for visualization. So again, all of this stuff you'd normally be exposing and setting all of this up in your own projects anyway. And all of this is just exposed to the forefront for you to play around with and tweak as you want it to work. We can see those changes took effect immediately. Everything's still working as expected. I just really like how visual this is uh, and just super quick to get things running. I did want to mention one thing. They also provide a bullet example, which is quite useful because a lot of people don't seem to realize that uh, working with collisions can be quite unreliable. Uh, you can have a lot of cases where two colliders will go through each other. And if the, the feedback happens on the wrong tick or the wrong frame and that gets missed, then it can potentially mean that uh, you have collisions just kind of merging through each other, not being picked up, especially when you're using things like the projectile movement component and moving it like considerably high speeds. So working with ray traces or line traces, as we can see here, this is running on the event tick from the did it hit actor. Sending out line traces is usually a lot more reliable than relying on colliders. So this is quite useful to show how you'd work this into a projectile as well as a melee. Just wanted to cover, there's a really weird setup going on here though. Uh, this isn't how you should use projectile movement components. Setting the velocity and the speed on construct isn't something you're meant to override. If you read, I don't want to go into the details of projectile movement, but if you read some of the tooltips, velocity is automatically inherited based on the speed unless you've changed certain values to not take a direction. So what you'll find is if you use this, if you just press play and try and fire a projectile, you might be wondering why nothing's appearing. And that's because there's no movement being applied to the projectile. So to get this working, you can try and set the speed here. You'll see that I do that just to demonstrate that this won't fix it because the overrides happening here are incorrect. I'm still not firing a projectile. What you can do, just unhook all of this from the construct, press play, and we can see that we can now fire the projectiles as expected, as long as you've set there to be a default speed in the movement of the projectile movement component. So just something to be aware of there. I think a lot of people still get confused with this component. Nice, easy way to fix this. For the procedural environments, as I mentioned, I did download and install this. It's in the same project, so I can still run around and work with the uh, did it hit plugin just here. Really not too much to, to mention, as I said, the, the style of assets just isn't uh, to, to my taste, but it, it looks pretty good in an open world level. Fairly decent kind of fidelity going on. The assets are what you'd expect. Uh, as I've mentioned, the main thing, I just wanted to see if there were any blueprints, if there's anything that comes by default uniquely with this plugin that makes it procedural. And from what I can see, it doesn't. It is just an environment kit. As I said, unless I'm missing something, then do let me know. Triplex House Filler. Now this one was a little bit of a surprise. I very much expected, I didn't read the full description, so it might be in there. I very much expected this to just be kind of visual fly through, or maybe even not have a fly through, just a visual layout of the levels and the assets. I was nicely surprised with this essentially could be a House Flipper 2 or 3. I don't know where they are at the moment. This would be a great start to that type of game. It has a whole bunch of implementations, some functionality to interact with different doors. You can open fridges. Uh, you can even redesign some of the elements of like the living room i'll just jump to that now so if we come in here we can change the textures and the materials which are being used on different assets in the the apartment which i thought was really cool this is something i thought would be just purely visual just assets which is fine is great uh, we probably need those as well but i do like to see in the monthly rotation those blueprint or c plugins and projects where you can actually pull them apart and learn something from them hopefully make it more kind of universal to a lot of different projects and this seems to have that i quite like the fact that they've provided all of this interaction and the assets very high fidelity they just look very good and on that note just jumping to some of the materials again something which is quite good to pull apart they've made the materials from what i can see the assets have a kind of minimal amount of material slots and those slots are used in a very conventional way. So the materials are broken down, the textures have multiple layers controlling different 
element. So we can see here we've got the, the roughness, the ambient occlusion, and the metallic all packed into a single texture, which means in comparison to a lot of plugins that I've seen on the marketplace, which will just have one texture for each, and then you've got a lot more draw calls, but these are packed into the different channels. So that type of thing, again, keeping things as um, performance friendly and tidy as possible. And we have various different types of materials to look through. So different surfaces, we've got things like the bricks, the carpets, the the props all have their different things so where possible i think this has kind of been broken down to reduce the draw calls been used in a very good way so some interesting and useful things you could probably pull out from both the blueprints and the materials and the kind of processes they've gone into making this a very well maintained looking project so that's the free content in the month of january 2023 apologies for the voice you've probably noticed i'm even more nasally than usual i am currently on the uh, the tail end of an illness so hopefully I'll be kicking that soon. Have some more content for the channel. But yeah, let me know what you thought. Are you going to be using any of these? Were you looking at any of these packages anyway? Or do you have some ideas for new games or projects based on the free content that's been released this month? Let me know what you think in the comments down below.